Hi, good evening, everybody. Welcome to our last discussion on United We Stand, Divided We Fall. Fall, where Michael and I are really excited to have everybody with us this evening. We're excited to have Leah with us. I'll let, inter, have her introduce herself to you in a minute. Michael and I have been discussing issues that divide the church with the desire to kind of find common ground that brings unity in the church. And I think I think all of us would would say that we desire to to see more unity. But I think if if we're going to see that, we're going to have to be really intentional at making that happen and and really desiring to find just just common ground things that we have in common values that we can all all agree on that bring the church together because uh it's an old saying but it's so true uh you know if if we're together we can accomplish a whole lot more and we're stronger together and we're weaker when we're apart and there's plenty of scriptures that talk about how the many members come together and if we come together we, we kind of complete that that body and that's that's what i feel like we're even doing this evening with uh, with Michael and Leah, so it's great to have Leah with us. Um, this evening, I want to kind of move outside the church walls. Michael and I have been discussing things that kind of divide the divide the, the church inside the walls, but I think there's things that, that that divide the church and the greater community at large, and I think the church can do a much more effective job at at uniting and collaborating and partnering with different organizations outside the church so that we can really bring unity in, in the greater community. And, and I really believe that's part of the mission of the church. And Leah does such a phenomenal job with that as an individual and with Restoration Rochester. So I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to have Leah just introduce herself. So, Lord, we just thank you for this discussion. We thank you that we have uh, all this technology and these forums available for us to do this in the midst of this, uh, this quarantine that we're in. And uh, I think uh, I think it's getting a little old <laughs> for all of us. And uh, so, Lord, we're just praying that that uh, this thing would be over, and that you would bring uh, that you would bring healing to those who are sick, and uh, that you w- would just reign, and you would give us you would give us, just give us peace, and uh, things could just begin to get back to some some sort of normal. And uh, Lord, we thank you just in the midst of it all that you can be with us, and that you're. That you can believe us or forsake us in Jesus' name, Amen. Uh, so, Leah, yes. why don't you just introduce yourself? Tell us who you're with, where you fellowship at, so people get to know you a little bit. Okay, great. So, um, I hope my internet connection is okay yeah, over here. It's, it's fine. It's working. Telling me, I telling me, I have an unstable internet connection, but I have That's green light, funny. so that shouldn't be the case. Nah. You're- <laughs> You'll be all right. People understand it gets a little laggy on, on Zoom, so that's okay. Yeah, so um, so my name is Dick Kazmersky. I am the servant leader slash CEO of Restoration Rochester, which um, for those of you who don't know, Restoration Rochester is an organization, now an organization, officially a 501c3 this year, Woo-hoo! but it started out, yeah, praise God, yeah. <laughs> it started out as a ministry 10 years ago that um, that I started personally and just really started just serving people. My whole goal with Restoration Rochester and, and the Lord gave me that name about restoring the city and the whole thought process behind when I first started was just to serve people and just to help people navigate our broken system from the inside out while being the hands and feet of Jesus Christ to them. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so that's carried through for the last 10 years of just serving people. And um, the last probably about four years have been really exciting. Just the Lord has really brought different churches like Bethel and ministries like um, Mission Share, which we still have some office space over there that we use. Um, that's our West Side Hub. And a lot of different people he's brought alongside the ministry to help us get to where we are today. So um, really excited just about what God's doing in, in Restoration Rochester. And just to kind of give you an idea of like a couple of the programs that, we were, that we're working on right now. So the Compassion Care Management it's a new name that we use for it, but it's the same as what I've been doing for 10 years. It's really just caring for people. So it's like case management, but there's a lot of compassion injected into it mm-hmm. and a lot of um, the Holy Spirit and the Lord just, just loving on people. And, um, and then the other piece to what we do, we host a community collaborative meeting that meets once a month mm-hmm. and also a situation room meeting that's uh, 
the same folks from the community collaborative that meet weekly um, to collaborate, get to know each other, really work together. And, you know, just like you and Michael have been talking about in these forums about the church working together, the same thing rings true in the community. The more we work together, the more effective we are. So, uh, so that's specifically surrounding community-based organizations. And then we have a new program that we're working on that we haven't really rolled out yet <coughs> called Ministries United, and that really talks to the churches working together. So yeah. that's about it for where we're at, where we came from, and what we're doing now. And uh, just to give you an idea where we're located, we have a city hub. Our city hub, is that's our headquarters, is at the Open Door Mission office on Plymouth Avenue. And we're there three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we're out at the Mission Share office out in Greece servicing our, our West Side clients. So awesome. that's about all I can do in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Leah. That was, that was yeah. great. We're excited to have you with us. And Leah, I'm excited to be here. Thank you for inviting me. No problem. Leah's been a good friend for a long time. As a matter of fact, uh, a, a really long time. Um, really long time. Leah, I think I was three when I yeah. met Pastor David. Yes. So, so we've been we've been connected for a long time, and and Leah has has just such a compassionate heart. I just appreciate her love and her concern for, for, for people. It's really unique and so Christ-like, and I just appreciate all that you do in your, your ministry, and it's just great to, to have you with us. I know Michael, Michael got excited when, when I said, hey, you know, it'd be, be great to have Leah on this discussion with us, and he said, oh, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So we're, we're both God. excited to have you. So listen, I want to I wanna frame this discussion with a few, a few questions. I mentioned them earlier to you. I don't think I mentioned them live yet, but... Um, so for those of you who are watching, I uh, want to frame the discussion with a few questions. Uh, here they are. So how do, how do Christians see the world outside the church? Because this is, this is an important question that I think we all need to ask ourselves, because depending on your lens or your perspective or your view of this, of this question, um, it causes you to engage or disengage in, in the world outside the, the church. So we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Um, so how do Christians engage the world outside the church? I think most Christians would, would agree that um, God has called us to be disciples. He's called us to share Christ. We all have different ways that we do that. Um, some are more quiet about it. Um, some, would, some would say that we, they have a private faith, but their values are really important, and their values form their, their, their opinions, their, their perspectives, and their, their decisions. And so they would say that, that people can see Christ in them. You know, I'm, you know, I'm, a, I'm a good person. And, um, and then the last question is, can we as Christians collaborate with other organizations that may not be Christians per se, but are doing good work in the community? that are consistent with our principal values in our mission. And uh, believe it or not, I think that question is probably more controversial than most people think. I don't think it's controversial for us three, <laughs> right. but, but it tends to be pretty controversial. And, and I just want to share a couple passages of scripture and I'm going to stop blabbing and I'm going to have <laughs> Leah, Leah and Michael, Michael share more. Um, but it kind of, it, it kind of explains why there are different perspectives about how Christians engage the world. And uh, they're familiar passages of scriptures. We've been, at least as a church, we've been spending a lot of time in the Gospels lately. Um, and uh, this, is, this comes from the Gospel of John. It's in John 16, 33. This is, um, this is Jesus talking to his disciples um, right before his, his departure. He says, I've told you these things. So that in me, you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. And then later on in the Gospel of John, John, when, um, when, when I, I think they were in Pilate's residence, actually, Jesus was under, under arrest and he informs the Roman, Roman governor of this. Pilate was the Roman governor. governor. He said, um, my kingdom is not of this world because Pilate was asking Jesus, you know, are, are you planning on establishing your own kingdom? I, I mean, are you going to establish yourself as the king of the Jews? And he says, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. Now, I share those passages of scripture because there's a lot of disagreement as to what these scriptures actually mean. 
I think for some Christians, there's this us and them mentality. Like we in the church look outside in the world at everybody outside of the world as them, and they are different from us. And there's not a whole lot that they have to offer that's good. And, you know, we in the church, we have to separate ourselves from the world because the world is sinful and stained and we don't want to get corrupted by, by, by the world. So we're going to establish our own little kingdom in the, in the church. And, um, you know, so again, there's different, different opinions about this. I'm going to share our opinion because, you know, this is, this is our post, you know, so we get to share our opinion <laughs> and you can have your own. Um, but I, I, I want to ask Michael. Michael, what's your perspective on this and how, how, how does the church properly engage the world? Um, should, should the church view everything outside there in the world as evil and bad and you got to stay away from it because it's going to corrupt you, corrupt us. And, you know, we can't work with that organization because they're not Christians or, you know, what's your, what's your perspective on that? Uh, I think priority, we have to have our hearts aligned with God. I have to, as long as it's, I'm grounded, first off. I got to make sure I'm staying true to who God has called me to be. I have to go where he sends me. And um, if you look at how Christ walked this earth, he didn't always fellowship with the people that were, quote, unquote, in the temples. He went out to the people that were the outcasts. He embraced those who were counted out. So, um, and the thing is, understanding uh, in Matthew 5, 13, we're called to the earth. And so it kind of slows down to decaying. So if I'm going to be the salt of the earth, I have to be moving through the earth in some ways. I believe that God uses, um, one, I believe God places his purpose within every last person, and it's our choice whether to receive it or not, and to actually walk in it. So I believe that every time I go into the world and I'm partnered up with a different organization that's outside of the four walls of the quote-unquote, I believe that's opportunity to also win a powerful soul for the army of Christ. Absolutely. So I believe that there, there is good out there. So I believe like we can't always just say, okay, well, I'm just going to stay inside the four walls of the church. Because, I mean, is church a building or is it a body or is it a family? What is it? So, I mean, we can't just say, okay, I'm just called to be inside the four walls. We are the church. We go, whether it's digital or whether it's in person, we are the church. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Leah, how, uh, share some thoughts on that. Yeah. So, um, so, you know, I always looked at the world because I used to be a sinner just like the rest of us. Right. We all we all lived a part of our life that we aren't proud to admit or right. or think about that often. And so, you know, ever since I rededicated my my life to Christ, which, you know, I dedic I gave my life to Christ as a really young child. Um, but ever since I rededicated my life to Christ, I've always looked at the world outside as not just a mission field, but that um, you know, these are, these are people that the Lord loves and he wants to, he wants us to serve them and reach them with his love. And so, um, you know, yeah, so certainly there's a place for repentance and there's a place for all of that. But I believe that by loving people that are in this world, that's how people are really going to come to Christ. And I'm not saying that it, you know, it's just like this, like, you know, love that has no boundaries or, or anything like right. that. But I guess what I'm saying is that I think that, you know, Michael said it well when he was saying, you know, Jesus went to the outcasts. Like if we're just sitting here communicating with each other within the church, then who's going to reach the people that are outside of the church? That's right. So I, I think it's, I think it's important for us to have friends that are non-believers. And I know for a fact that both of you do. Mm -hmm. And so I know that we both agree on that, you know, that it's, it's important to have friends that are not believers and we may not always agree on everything, okay. um, you know, but it doesn't mean that they're not my friends. And just because they don't make the Lord, their Lord and Savior yet, doesn't mean that they won't. And it doesn't mean that I'm going to stop being friends with them. That's right. That's right. You know, I, um, there's another passage. I'm just going to read this passage of scripture real quick and then kind of, share another another perspective um it's in uh it's in matthew and we, we're all familiar with this is it's called the the lord's prayer it's in matthew 6 he said so then this is how you should pray our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven you know i think you know we we come from this uh 
th- this perspective that God wants us to to engage the world, that He cares about the world. He doesn't just care about the church, and He wants to bring His kingdom to this earth. And you know, so what does what does that mean? I, I think it's very clear that that Jesus was trying to communicate that my kingdom is not of this world. My ki- in other words, my kingdom is not what you think it is. Mm-hmm. It's not about me forcing people into subjection. And I think some Christians think that, that if we just force people to believe that they, I mean, I think there's some Christians that, that would, would like this, this nation to be a theocracy mm-hmm. and uh, the church would run it politically. And that Jesus didn't do that. Jesus believed in changing people from the inside out. He wanted, he wanted them to, to have willing hearts. He didn't want to force people into some sort of belief system. Um, he wanted followers to follow him because, because they loved him. And um, so his kingdom was something very different. It was a very different ideal, but it was something that it was, a, that it was real. It wasn't just some sort of theology or a teaching to be taught. It was something to be lived out. So in other words, you know, people who were his disciples, who believed in him, would go out into the world and somehow establish his kingdom. And I think that's done in many different ways. And they did it by healing the sick. When the sick were healed and there were, there were demons that were cast out of people, uh, Jesus would say, um, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So it, it certainly has something to do with supernatural things, but I think it has, has to do with things that are actually even practical things. You know, you're, you're to go out into the world, use what I've done in you, use your transformed heart to begin to transform other heart, uh, hearts and bring goodness into the world. Um, because I, I, God cares about people, and I think he cares about the world. I think he cares about the city. I think he cares about things that m- maybe we don't care about. Um, mm-hmm. and, and I think that he wants us to engage in the world and not hide in our church walls. And, and again, the reason why I had Leah come on here, and I know Michael does – does the same thing. And I want him to share a little bit about where, where he works and how he works with young men at, at, at Virtus. Uh, but Leah, um, you know, the reason why I had you on this, uh, on this, uh, what, what do we call this? This is a recording. It's going to be put up on Facebook. It's not live. But <laughs> it's going to be put up on Facebook. The reason why I had Leah, Leah come because Leah does such an effective job at living out her faith connecting with organizations, and, and many of them are not necessarily Christian. Actually, they're not. They're not Christian organizations. Right, most of them aren't. Yeah, most of them aren't. Yeah. But they're doing great things in the community to feed the poor, to help single single women find homes. And, you know, I, so just share a little bit about some of the great work that you do, and and, and I believe is totally inspired by Christ in you, what Jesus has Amen. done. Amen. Yeah, it's totally... I, you know, I take no credit for what the Lord's done in my life or even through me in my ministry. I really, it's all him. And um, I remember back when the Community Collaborative actually started about a year and a half ago, I remember having a conversation with you, David, about the collaborative. And I don't know if you remember this conversation, but we were talking specifically about, do we open it up to non-faith-based organizations? I remember. Right. So originally it was just churches. It started out with three women, myself and two other women, one from um, uh, Third Presbyterian and one from Asbury. And it started out with the three of us because we were serving people on the East Avenue area. And so it was like, you know, my office was at Bethel and then they were at the two other churches on East Avenue. So it started out with three churches and started out with us just meeting, talking about how do we collaborate? How do we, you know, work together and provide each other resources that we're working with? And I remember having this conversation with you and both of us just agreed tremendously that if we're going to do this and we're going to do it right and we're going to do it the way that God wants to see the kingdom work within the community that it has to be open to non-faith-based organizations because back to you know what um, Michael was talking about about being the salt to the salt of the earth you can't be the salt if you're not out there and and you you know and so 
So the Lord's done an amazing work with the Community Collaborative and just bringing community-based organizations. We have a, a large percentage of the organizations that are a part of the Community Collaborative are not faith-based organizations. Mm -hmm. We actually have people from um, different hospitals. We have people from um, different municipalities and things like that that join our, join our meetings and join our calls. And it's just very exciting to see. And even in this like digital time in the, these unprecedented times with everything that we're dealing with with COVID, you know, I was a little concerned that maybe, you know, because we went all digital that we may lose some folks and yeah. different things like that. And sure, some of our meetings are a little bit smaller, but overall, like people are still engaged and they're still um, communicating with each other. And we're building, we're working on building a database of the people who are a part of the community collaborative and they're communicating with each other between the monthly meetings and so it's really exciting to see what God's doing in our community and uh, one of the things that I will say about the uh, about what where the Lord's kind of leading us with Restoration Rochester and I know David you were on our our Ministries United call last week what? is the Lord was like, you know what, Leah, I've already given you the model with the community collaborative that you've done for a year and a half. Now let's take it to the churches. Mm -hmm. And that was what was exciting about the Ministries United thing is like, like now, not only are we going to have this community collaborative, but let's get the church to unite because I think revival this time looks different than what it did last time. And it's all about us working together as the church and as the body. So I hope I didn't go off too much on a, on a bunny trail there, but, no, um, but the Perfect. Lord is just, the Lord is really moving in our city. I'm so excited to see the unification that's happening with community-based organizations, churches, individuals. I mean, community members that are just reaching out. Um, just to share a little bit of a story from today, we had a, a single mom who is coming out of homelessness. We're working on helping her get her 10-year-old back in her care, and uh, it's just it's just been such an amazing story. But I posted out a care portal request because we're a part of the care portal with um, Ashley and Melvin Cross. Restoration Rochester is actually signed up as like a church under the care portal, and so we're a part of that. And uh, we put out a care portal request and I posted it on my Facebook and the, the amazing response of the community, it was like community members, community based organizations, just people just people want to come together for a common cause. And a lot of it's not just Christians. But there are a lot of Christians out there that really want direction and how do we how do we move forward in a unified way? How do we do that? And so I think the Lord's beginning to really show us the blueprint for that. Amen. That's awesome. I'm glad, I'm glad you shared about Care Portal. They're doing great work in in our city. Really thankful for Melvin and Ashley Cross and their in their leadership in the city. They're good good friends of ours. We love them at Glory House International and pray for them. Yeah. And so. Yeah. Hey, so Michael, why don't you share again? I know you've you've done this. You introduced yourself a couple a couple weeks ago, but I want you to share a little bit about some of the great work that you do and uh, the organization, the school that you work with. I just love what you do. I love your heart for these young men. You do a radio show. Just share a little bit about how you engage the community. Um, I mean, you carry Christ with you wherever you are, and uh, I just want you to share a little bit about what you do and what you're involved in. Absolutely. So currently I'm the um, city uh, year recruiter at Burtis Charter School, which is an all-male um, high school in the city of Rochester. And um, what's interesting, I started off there as, uh, as, as at a place called the Preceptor, which is a pretty much almost like a mentor. Mm -hmm. And your job is to develop a relationship with these young men, um, hold them accountable, make sure they're getting to class on time, make sure that you're in touch with the parents at least bi-weekly, and just really creating that support system for each young man. And one of the most rewarding things when working at a place like this, where um, you're honestly shepherding these young men into honestly adulthood, is seeing the growth. You see some who come in, you see some come in kicking and screaming, don't want to come to school. They want to um, do that whatever they want to do. That was all of my kids. <laughs> <laughs> and I, 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 I've, um, dealt with some kids that were very challenging when I got there. And to this day, I still keep in touch with them. But seeing them graduate and seeing how the men that they've grown into become, 
it's one of the most rewarding things ever. And um, and what's funny is like a year before even going there, God placed the desire in my heart to work at a high school, which I never thought I would want to do. And he says, I have, I have an assignment for you there. And um, what's interesting, I have a history with um, entertainment industry. So I've written scripts, I'm an author, um, music, uh, songwriting, uh, concert promoting, and et cetera. And I was able to bring all those interests into this building as well. So now we have a radio show where I bring the young men on. Um, they actually co-host the show alongside myself. We speak on a lot of different social issues. Uh, honestly, a lot of issues that we've been talking about on here. I mean, whether it's um, political issues, whether it's racism, whether it's, hey, what's the youth think about this or that? And it's giving them a platform to showcase their talents and giftings and also give them a little experience within um, the entertainment industry. Now, what's interesting is that I think back to like what I'm doing is, it's Romans 8, 18, where it says, for I consider that the suffering of the present time are not worthy to be compared not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. And I think back to like some of my darkest days and the things where I was, times where I was struggling. What's interesting is none of that time was wasted. I see some young men who are going through similar things that I've already uh, made it through, that God has brought me through. And I'm able to actually walk and really be the hands and feet inside that building. Now, being a public school, I can't really say, hey, come over here, I'm going to read scripture to you. I mean, you know, but my thing is I get to show them Christ through my actions and how I live my life. So yeah. me being able to share an area of my life where in my testimony and they actually get to see how I walk, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing to actually show them the demonstration of Christ, which is that love, which is that grace, which is that forgiveness. And honestly, you have to practice that on a daily basis with some students. Some students require more patience than others. So I'm like, okay, you did this yesterday and it annoyed me. Like, I don't know what, <laughs> but I'm going to have to really show you grace and forgive you. You know, it's a new day. <laughs> yeah. And that's pretty much just the grace that God has shown me. I, as an adult and as a staff member, I have to show that same grace day in and day out. So it's really, honestly, it's really been more, I feel like more, it's been beautiful for me more, more so than them. You guys can grow me so much by being in that position. Amen. Amen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this out there because this is going to go up, up on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Michael. We've talked a little yeah. bit about possibly developing a trades program over there at Virtus. Oh, yeah. All right, so now it's yep. now it's out there, and other people are yeah. heard it. So we're going to have to have more discussion about this. But there you go. Um, that's, that's, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. The the reason why I had both Leah and Michael share about a, a little bit about what they're doing and what they're involved in is because they're they're believers who are part of the church, a strong part of the church. They're, they're, they're members of a church. In other words, um, they, they help complete the body of Christ in the local, in the local church there. I know they're, they're, they're involved. I don't think Leah and Michael can be a part of any congregation and not be plugged in and involved because they're, they're just those types of individuals. And, and that's God's desire for everyone. If you're not, if you're fellowshipping somewhere and you are not plugged in and being used, then you need to go to your pastor and say, how can I serve you? Uh, how, can I, how can I help you? Um, or if, if you're feeling like you're not plugged into the mission of your church, you need to find a congregation or family that you can get plugged in and, and God can use your giftings because God doesn't want you to be idle where you're at. So I'm yeah. so thankful I have two people that are not just engaged in the church, but they're engaged in the community. And I Amen. think that's what, what it's all about. I want to. Um, we're going to have to come to come to a close. I want to. I want to end w with this thought. I, I did a devotional a long time ago. I think it was a men's in a men's Bible study. I was talking about how Jesus said to his disciples, "I want to make you fishers of men." And you know, we read that, and whenever we talk about evangelizing, we use that expression um, or that anecdote, "fishers of men," because that's what Jesus. You know, Jesus wants to make us all fishers of men. And I was praying about that and put, putting that devotional together, and something just hit me. Um, I'm not, well, I actually, I do fish. But not everybody's a fisherman. Yeah, <laughs> I actually yeah. hunt, too. Um, but but not, every, not everybody hunts. Um, the reason why Jesus used that, that illustration t with the disciples is because what, what was the occupation of the disciples he was talking to? They, they were fishermen. So he said, 
I'm going to make you fishers of men because you're, you're fishermen. So that was their occupation. It hit me. It's like God wants to use our occupation, our passions, our desires to draw others to Christ. It, it, it was fishermen for fishermen, but it's, but you know, for, for, for Michael, it's, I, I want to use your music. I want to use your creativity and your writing and your, your passion for these young men to draw others to Christ. You know, for, for Leah, you know, because of what your background and what you've gone through and what Christ has brought you, brought you through and the vision that God has given you, he wants to use that to draw others to Christ. You know, for, for me, I'm, I'm a pastor of a church, but I also am partners with uh, my boys. We own a construction company. I, God has given me a vision to, to start a, a, a trade school, and I, I got to start working it harder, at putting feet to this. But um, I, I know that God wants to use my passion and love for building to teach others, you know, a, a skill, sure, you know, that they can, they can make they can get a good job and they can make money and, you know, they can be fulfilled because I believe we're fulfilled when we pursue our passion, when we're doing that thing that God has created us to do. And actually, I think, I think that's worship. I think that's, yeah. what, I think that's worship. I think when we're doing that thing that God has called us to do, it's like worship and it, and it goes to the heavens and God is just so pleased with that. And, uh, yeah. you know, so I, I think that's what God wants us to do. And I know that, 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 that anybody that's listening to this video, this, this post can connect with this and relate to this. You are unique and special and you have a unique passion and gifting and occupation. God wants to use that um, to, to engage the world, to bless, to bless the world, the entire world. Um, yes, to reveal Christ, and, and we hope that, that people get saved and know Christ. I mean, that's our deepest desire. But also, we want to just love people. We want to see people fulfilled. We want to see people have gainful employment and jobs and good relationships and to be able to provide for their kids and their families. And um, so, I mean, that that's what we're all about. Everybody that, that, that you've listened to, Michael and Leah, that's what we're about. And, and if there's any way that we can help you or pray for you, we'd love for you to contact us. Leah, give a plug for Restoration Rochester. Share your email address and your phone number so people can contact you if they, if they want okay, to. Okay, great. Yeah, so Restoration Rochester, our website is um, restorationrochester.org. You can find out more about us and what we're involved in in the community on our website. Our hotline number, if you have anybody during this um, COVID time that, you know, and even after the COVID time that's in need of assistance with food, clothing, shelter, things like that, our hotline number is 585 340 Seven two two five, and you can always reach me. Um, I believe that info at restorationrochester.org goes directly to my email. But if for some reason you can't reach reach me there, just Leah L E A H dot Kaz K A Z at restorationrochester.org, and uh, we'd be happy to help anybody that needs help. And you know, just a quick point to what David was saying um, about what I've been through. The only reason that I can do what I what I'm doing with Restoration Rochester with the Lord's help is because I had to go through some very dark times myself. And because of what I went through, I learned the system from the inside out. And we are really also looking for people who have been in the system that love the Lord, that understand the system to actually help serve other people. So if that's you, if you've been in a dark time in your life and you really want to serve people and see people restored, please reach out to us and let us know. We'd love to have your help. Amen. Thank you so much, Leah. And, uh, and we're going to have some news to share about Michael, but we're not going to tell you yet. He's, uh, he's one of our <laughs> ministry leaders at, at Bethel Christian Fellowship. And uh, in a couple of weeks, we're going to be making an exciting announcement. Now, don't bug him. Don't bug him and ask him, what's the announcement we got to know? You know, you can, just, you can just be praying about it, but I'm, I'm just excited about it. So I just had to mention something. Um, but, uh, it's great always to, uh, connect with my good, good friend, uh, good friend, Michael, 
and it's been exciting to do these these three discussions with him. And Leah, as always, we we love you, and uh, we're so so proud of you, and excited to be connected with what you're doing in Rest- Restoration Rochester. That's so, great. I love you guys both very much. Thank you so much for having me on today. You're very welcome. So we're going to sign off. And uh, if anybody has any questions or uh, comments, feel free to do that down below. And uh, we'll get in touch with you if you want to get a hold of Bethel uh, or me, Pastor David or or, or Michael. You can just email us at uh, info at Bethel cf.com or you can my personal email is ddomina at bethelcf.com by the way we changed that a lot of emails have been bouncing back recently because it used to be bethelroc.com yes that happened to me (laughs) yeah it's not roc anymore it doesn't work so it's bethelcf as in christianfellowship.com so for for the rest of you just god bless you we're thank you for joining us this evening And we just pray God's provision, his hope, and his peace over you in Jesus' name. And uh, this is Pastor David and Michael James and Leah Kazmierski signing off. God bless you.